everyone in the film almost does what he or she thinks is right, you know. And I think the 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 how do you say <laughs> the the um, fiasco we are all finding ourselves in Christmas. in the world is, is basically a collection of good many people doing the good thing, doing the right thing, and and the cocktail of it is 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 total destruction, right? I I think that's what I was kind of trying to highlight in the film, you know. There's nothing bad to give a t-shirt to, to a kid, but there's something behind it, you know. There's this uh, psychology of, of colonizers, because when you, let's, let's, let's face it, when you come to a tribe um, with naked people, right, and you want to take over the land and you want to kind of control the land, you, you can't do this with naked people. You need people in uniforms and guns and they need to march in step and all these things. And before somebody can march in step, he has to learn how to wear socks and shoes and, you know, and all these things. So it's, it's, it's just an insane system, <laughs> basically. And, uh, and religious metaphors uh, drive that. And we're over the centuries always driving that. It's like, we are superior, we are the Europeans, we, we come to you know, Park City, like hundreds of years ago, and there's some Indians here, or, mm -hmm. uh, and they were not marching in step, and they were not lining up in queues to get into a cinema or something. <laughs> 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 but now they do, you know, like, like everyone else. But, uh... um, I really love Darwin's Dar Dar Nightmare as well. Um, and I think that What effect do the films have? Um, uh, the, the, I just, I'm blown away by them. They're just such an amazing portrait of the places you've been. Um, but I'm always curious how they're received around the world and like what, what does it mean to and what have you seen for yourself in terms of reactions? Well, I can tell you one thing. There's, there's, a, there's a big ongoing question, especially in Sundance, is uh, uh, can films or documentaries in special uh, change the world? Um, and it's always implied change the world for the better, of course. You know? um, I, I think movies change the world in a very extreme way, very strongly, but not always for the better. You know? so I, because it, it, I hope it goes to some... I, these movies go to millions of people you know, after this is just starting. You know, it's going it's to be out for years and to literally millions or tens of millions of people. And it's going to hit them into their soul somehow, you know? And uh, it's, and it becomes now, and two hours before, you you were not the same people. You were you didn't see this experience together, and and now it's a part of your life experience, what you just saw, and it's gonna be, you know, going into your, your brain and your soul, and it's gonna be a part of you for the rest of your life, if you want it or not. I'm sorry to tell you that. <laughs> but, uh, so, so it, it's, it's going to do something, you know, maybe in 10 years from now you're going to run into a Sudanese guy in, on, in, in JFK and, and uh, you have completely forgotten the film, but you're going to say, like, uh, how's your country? And, you know, it's going to become your friend and you're going to, you know, f go there once and uh, you can get married to someone just from there. <laughs> <laughs> and then you would never remember it was a movie that kind of made you sensible to even talking to somebody from Sudan, you know? So I think there's a lot of things... Uh, it, may, it does a lot of things. I think mass media is uh, very, very powerful. And, and, uh, but I don't really, as a filmmaker, claim that I make a film to make the world a better place. I, can, I don't claim that, you know, because I, I just, it's out of my hand, you know, what you make of it, you know? I can't, I can't say what, you know, <laughs> what, what you're going to do. You know, some people see this and they say, like, okay, Africa is done, you know, and I'm, I'm out of here, just let them, you know, burn, you know, because they're just, that's it, you know, fine, you know, some people have this reaction and I can't help, help it, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, too, it's sad, but it's, it's, uh, it's real, too. So many hands, uh, you know, maybe here. It was just really interesting because you were saying like we're all viewing the same picture and getting so many different ideas because I cringe so much when the missionaries were judging people and it's hot and they're telling them they're wrong to be naked and that just 
made me so upset because they need food. They need to learn how to, you know, cultivate the land and be able to use the resources for their own people, not for Americans or Chinese yeah. and, or French or <coughs> British. And, and then instead of helping, they're just going, you're wrong and we're going to beat yeah. you for... Well, that's what you're saying is precisely, that's the psycho, I mean, the whole, this whole movie basically is, a, um, I grew up in, in, in Austria, the city of, in Vienna, the city of uh, Sigmund Freud, <laughs> and so this movie is kind of a psychoanalysis of, uh, of a pathology, which is a, a, the, the colonial mindset, you know, mm -hmm. which is a European pathology. Um, and so uh, the, the, the colonial mindset and that instrumentalizes racism and, and culture basically came to a to a dead end which was Nazism in, in Europe which was basically the all of these hundreds of years of, of, of racism and separation and and superior race and lower race and, and, and high standard technically and low standard kind of smashed into the wall you know this was 60 years ago you know? so I think the colonial <laughs> Uh, I think Hannah Arendt, if you know Hannah Arendt, the, the, the German intellectual, she said the, the Nazism was nothing but a bl blueprint of, of colonialism. Mm. Yeah, I think I agree with that. All right, if you were first. Yeah. I'm just curious how you, uh, how you got the war footage at the end. The war footage uh, came from a soldier from the SBLA army, from the South Sudanese army. Um, and uh, it was brought to me by a friend who is a TV journalist in South Sudan. It's a young man who is going to come to Berlin, and I sent uh, I sent uh, money to to kind of recompensate this young man for his footage. And um, my friend Bingo is trying to find for him, find him now. And because the place where the footage is shot is uh, called Hiklik, it's near Bentiu, and so in, in South Sudan on the border of North South Sudan, which is now uh, no longer there. The city is destroyed. And uh, for the last two weeks, I don't know, I have no news from this man, and there's a chance that he's just uh, part of the victims, you know. That's from, exactly from 2000, uh, March 2012, that footage. And now, uh, it's much worse, actually. Yeah. No, this, is, was, this was just, a, just one flaring war. Uh, the, 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 the moment when the... the, the, the the cowboy hat guy announced the war against the North Sudan. They were transpassing the new border that was, had just been created, <laughs> catching this uh, oil field, which is in North Sudan, basically to you know liberate to, to throw out the Chinese. Basically, you know, the Chinese were running. The ones you saw in the film there, they had to run. And um, uh, what was I going to say? And so there was this TV announcing the war, the war footage, and the guy on the pool was happening at the very same moment, really. That was the same day. Um, and it's in the montage of the film also on the same day, but of course in, in the film you can edit things the way you want, but it, it was factually the same day. Which is, um, which I know, I mean, it doesn't really matter if you know it or not, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's pretty crazy. It's, Thing, you know, and that these parallel situations, these parallel universes, um, um, are are so painfully, you know, um, contrasted. It's just amazing, you know. It's just crazy. You know? yeah. I think we have not many questions left. Right? Uh, time for one more. Maybe two more because you said. All right. <laughs> Okay, two more, but good questions. Yes, sir. Don't ask me what camera I use. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, just real quick. I've, I'm from Texas and recently just got denied entrance to North Sudan with a group of filmmakers. Uh -huh. And just to go on record, uh, not all Texans want to go to another country to, to impose their spiritual beliefs or trying to spread that. They'd rather spread knowledge and the most verified truth possible so that people can make the best decisions for what is right for their life. Uh, my question, specific question to you is what kind of challenges did you have if any, as a French citizen uh, trying to enter South Sudan, we were all denied for arbitrary reasons, and I'm sure that was Omar al-Bashir. 
the, because uh, one of the lead actors in our film was kind of active on social media, a younger guy, yeah. and his so, uncle was shot by one of the... Uh, right, so the question is, I mean, actually my, my, my co-pilot Barney was shot at too, and I, that's, yeah, I could tell you about that. But um, the question of access, uh, we were denied many times to many places, but one of the reasons why we, we used an airplane is that we literally dro drop from the sky into military camps and say, like, you guys were just had an engine failure and we need your help. And, <laughs> and they were like, oh, engine failure. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was also a Trojan horse. It was, it was a bluff also, the, the horse, the, the, the plane. But um, at the time when Sassan cut off from the north, it, uh, everyone was in the momentum of the West are the good guys, and uh, the Arabs are the bad guys, so we could get into South Sudan not so difficult, you know, because we were, of course, considered uh, Americans, actually. <coughs> and, uh, yeah, as for Texans, I'm, I'm completely <laughs> aware that not all of you. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it, there's, there's something about the, the whole concept of dividing the Sudan was a Texan idea, you know, it came from the Bush family. and. Uh, the, to make a long story short, the Bush family said, like, we were not going to leave all this oil to the Arabs and the Chinese. We're going to cut our piece of the cake, and, uh, and it, that happened in 2011. And it's not necessarily the, the will of the people as it, that is, as it is uh, proposed in the news here. Of course, the people said, we, don't, we want peace, and we, want, uh, we don't want to be bombed by Bashir or something. But no one really said, we want our own country. They said, like, we want a, you know, a peace, you know. Said, you know, but the, it was implied by the by by the West basically that only if you're in your your own nation, we cut out the, the evil Arabs and then you, everything's going to be fine. And now what's happening is that it's not the case. It's it's a complete mess. And uh, it sends again about the oil. It's two warlords, uh, Sarvakir and uh, Riyak Mashar, who I all know <laughs> and have been having beer with them many times. Um, they just go after each other, and basically the whole country is in, in in tatters because those two guys cannot decide who is going to write the contract with Chevron. You know, that's that's the truth. You know, so, <laughs> very true. Actually, I'm not uh, exaggerate. I I didn't have beer with with Sarvakir, but I met him. But he's the president. But I but I had beer with the the rebel guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's. I don't know what to, what to say. I mean, you saw them. You saw them, right? You saw the guy who's, who forgot the anthem text. <laughs> He's, those guys run the place, you know, and they steal billions of dollars and 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 basically want to get rid of the rest of the the, the old uh, life, you know. So they 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 are in shame. They're shamed that their uncle is too barefoot or something. That's a, that's a crime against humanity, you know. <clears throat> okay, I think we're one one line very quickly. Uh, hey, Annie. Um, as you know, I, I'm I'm a part of a movement to make revolution, and I, sitting here, you really feel like we we should not put up with this system one minute longer, and that's on all of us. And I, my question is, you you really did deal deal with the culpability of of the West, of the U.S., of China. Is that what, I mean, you said the exploring the pathology, but it's also the system. Is that what drove you? I mean, that, is that why, and is that why you chose South Sudan, or? Well, uh, I chose South Sudan for a simple reason, is that, that one of the most significant phenomena of, of colonialism is the division of people. And, uh, and South Sudan has been divided, uh, Sudan has been divided in 2011, and I figured as a filmmaker, this is a, basically a window into history, you know. It's like that moment transcended the whole you know, drama and, and ma 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 tragedy of, of uh, centuries of European, American, African history. <coughs> so that's why I chose Sassuolan as a, as a place to kind of make a point, you know. And obviously these kind of films you can make in, in anywhere in the world, really, you know. So it's uh, basically, right? I think you agree. Yeah. And he's, uh, she's going to lead a revolution. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> Everyone, please thank Hubert. You're so bad.